Welcome to Sandwiches of History. Today from the Neighborhood Cookbook of 1914, we're going to be making the watercress, lettuce, sardine, shrimp, and oyster sandwich. The name doesn't leave a lot to the imagination, but there is one ingredient not mentioned in it that we have to make first. Yes, yeah, the first thing we have to make is a French dressing. Now keep in mind, in 1914, French dressing meant vinaigrette. Uh, and this is an actual recipe from 1914 for a French dressing. So let's get into it, shall we? Salt, pepper, a few grains of cayenne pepper, onion juice, get that by shredding an onion and squeezing, and uh, mustard. Get that all combined. Now we add olive oil. And please remember, I did not write this recipe. I understand how to make a vinaigrette. This is not normal. I get it. Now we add vinegar a little bit at a time. First thing we add in is some uh, watercress. I know that this is not watercress. How do I know? Ah, look at that roots. This is cress, but it's sold at our markets here as watercress, and it's the closest I'm going to get. It's probably a little bit stronger than uh, watercress, but I'll back off on the amounts. Speaking of amounts, there were no amounts given in this recipe for the sandwich. Put in some lettuce, sardines, shrimp, and oysters. Yeah, I'm using canned everything because it was 1914. Don't know if everyone had access to fresh. Now we put that on the bread. No, not buttered. Go figure. Okay, let's give this watercress, lettuce, sardines, shrimps, and oysters sandwich a go. The shrimp are really sweet, really small. Good briny flavor from the oysters. A little bit of uh, fishiness from the sardines, but all of that is being kind of offset a little bit by the French dressing. And of course, you know, the nice crunch of the iceberg lettuce and a little bitterness, a little bite from the uh, watercress or cress. <laughs> um, I do want to plus it up just a little bit. I know most of you are thinking I'm going to bust out the Old Bay or the J.O. Spice, but I think I want to try a little toasted sesame oil. Okay, let's give this watercress, lettuce, sardines, shrimps, and oysters sandwich a go. Plus up with the toasted sesame oil, that is. <laughs> so now you got this deep nuttiness that's counteracting the tang of the vinaigrette, but that's still there. So they're kind of playing in concert together, two different uh, notes, but they're playing well together. And it goes well with everything in here, the, the seafood, the lettuce, the cress. All right, real quick before we get into it, uh, the vinaigrette recipe that I used was not from the sandwich recipe. There was no recipe for that in the book. So I used one from a different cookbook from 1914 and that's how it said to make it. Uh, the other thing is I used tinned seafood because I figure 1914, who's gonna have access to it? But then again, this cookbook was published in Portland. And if anybody has access to fresh seafood, it's Portland or Seattle or anywhere on the coast. Anyway, um, so it might be interesting to revisit this with uh, actual shrimp, fresh shrimp, and uh, fresh oysters, cooked oysters as opposed to tin, but I figured 1914, it's probably what they were going for, don't know. Anyway, the original watercress, lettuce, sardines, shrimps, and oyster sandwich, not bad. Actually, I'm gonna give that a five and a half, maybe six, um, plus up with a little toasted sesame oil to kind of give it a nice round nutty flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. That is tasty, I'm definitely gonna finish that. I don't know that I'd make this version again, but I might revisit it and make it with uh, freshly cooked shrimp and freshly cooked oysters because I think it'd be even better. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs>